Welcome back to the Space Invaders course. In the last lesson, we managed to get a piece of text bouncing around the screen, but it was doing that all by itself without any input from us. In this lesson, we're going to look at how we can use the control keys on the keyboard to make that text move around for us. So loading take 80 up again. This lesson is going to be based off last lesson's code. So if we first of all load our lesson 2 code in and we run that, just to remind ourselves that gets us a bouncing bit of text, um, but of course doing it all automatically. So coming into our code, let's just tie this up to be our lesson 3 code. And once we've given it the new title, if we just go out and then save as lesson three, that makes sure we don't overwrite any of our previous work. If we look at our code then, we can start to work out what we need to do. These first two lines, which set up our X and Y variables, we're going to have to keep those because obviously we need to have some variables that specify where the text is printed on the screen. The next block where we had set up some direction variables to tell the text which way to move, we're not going to be doing that anymore because we're going to be using buttons to tell us where to move. So we can take those ones out. Our tick function then, of course, this is required. This is where the actual um, programming magic happens. So we need to clear the screen so that we have a nice clean display to work with each frame. These next two lines were the ones which updated our X and Y coordinates. So we're still going to have to update them, but we don't yet know how we're going to do that. So what we can do is we can actually take out this line and we can put a little comment for ourselves to tell us what we need to do here. So we need to update, oops, update the x coordinate. And once we and that, that will, eventually we're going to replace that with some actual code. And in here we want to update the y coordinate. Once we've updated those coordinates, and again, they're gonna be looking at button presses in a second, we then need to carry on down our code. So if X has gone off the edge of the screen, then we need to limit it to the maximum value. At the moment, we are changing direction, but of course we don't need to do that because everything's gonna be controlled by our buttons. So we can actually take out that line. Similarly, we need to keep looking at the um, left-hand edge, but we don't need to change direction. The bottom of the screen, again, we don't need to change direction when we get there. And the top of the screen. So all of our code now, we will come in here, we will have a look and see if we need to move left or right, have a look and see if we need to move up or down. And if we hit any of the edges, we just simply stop at the edge. So we've really got the bare bones of our program ready. It's just these two lines that we don't yet know what to do. So let's have a look at how buttons work inside Tick80. There are eight buttons for you to use. The four cursor keys or arrow keys, which you generally use for movement, and then four other keys, which you use for actions such as firing or jumping. Each key is given a number, and we use these numbers to tell Tick80 which key we want to examine to see if it's being pressed or not. For this, we use the button command, or BTN, and that's a special little function written inside Tick80, and we give it the number of the key we want to check. If the key is being pressed, button will send us back a true answer, and if it's not being pressed, it will send back a false answer. We haven't yet covered functions, but this button command shows one of their powerful features. To actually look at a button and test it requires a lot of code. If we had to write this code out in full every time we wanted to check a key press, it would become very annoying. 
taking this code and putting it inside a function lets us reuse that in other parts of our program very, very easily, just as we're seeing here with this button command. So let's come back into our code and see if we can add these button presses then. We know here that we need to update the X coordinate to get it to go left and right. So the buttons we're going to be using then, we can put a little reminder to ourselves in here. Button two is the button that moves left and button three is the one that's going to move us right. So we need to do a test to see if these buttons are currently being pressed. So again, we're going to use our if statement. So we say if, and then we're going to make this expression. This is where we actually do our button test. So we're going to say if button two, which is our left button. So what the if statement says is you have this thing called an expression, which goes in here. If this expression is true, then the if statement will do its bit. If it's not true, then the if statement won't perform its action. So we're saying here, if button two is true, so in other words, if that button is being pressed, then we're going to do something. And the something we need to do is update the X coordinate to make it move left. And if you can remember, that's simply taking one away from it. And that's that button press done. So we should now find that if we um, press our button two, the text will move to the left. So let's try that out. So at the moment we're starting off actually at the left hand edge. If we set X to start at 120, that will start at somewhere in the center of the screen. So let's see if that works. So I'm skipping out of that, pressing run, and then pressing my left button. And you can see that we now have it moving to our left and it should then stop at the left hand edge. Let's come back into our code. So let's get to start up in the top left corner again. And let's put in our right hand button. Now we can use just a, a second if statement. So if we say if button three, so the right arrow is being pressed, then we want to update our X value by adding one to it. And that's the end of our if statement. So that then should let us have a look at going left and right now. So there we have left, so sorry, right and left. We now need to do the same for our Y coordinate or our up and down. So again, the buttons we're going to use for this are zero for up, and button one for down. So again, it's very similar then to how we were doing our X value. So why not pause the video here and see if you can work out how to do that for yourself. So for the up and down movement, it's pretty much exactly the same as we did for our left and right movement. So we're going to say if, and then using this button function, so if the up button is being pressed, then we want to take our y variable and give it a new value of y minus one. So remember minus one is moving up the screen. And that ends that if statement. And then if button one is being pressed, then we want to update our y variable by adding one to it. And that's the end of that if statement. So we've got all four buttons now, and let's see what that gives us when we run the program. So running the program again, we've now got our right and our left, our down and our up. And we should find that all the edges 
are still working where it stops at the edges and the final one at the top. So we now have all four buttons moving our text around the screen. Well that wraps it up for this lesson. So let's finish by going out here, making sure that we save our lesson three code. In the next lesson, we're going to continue on with these buttons, but we're actually going to start our real game code. And we'll start by getting our player ship on the screen and getting it to move left and right. So see you in the next lesson. Don't forget to visit the course pages for this project. There you'll be able to download the code for this lesson and get lots of extra hints and tips. You'll also get access to all my other programming, electronics and gaming projects. All the links are in the description below. For more game programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.